हेलो माय नेम इज सोनाली वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ अराउंड द वर्ल्ड India has emerged as a central player on the global stage that is why with its fearless and self-reliant image India is progressing well at the international level countries that once viewed India with skepticism are now eager to align with it in the 21st century India's economic progress has garnered attention worldwide leading to the signing of a 10 billion dollars free trade agreement with four european countries switzerland norway iceland and liechtenstein the foundation of this trade agreement was laid in 2008 but negotiations stalled however in 2016 discussions resumed and finally in 2024 the agreement reached fruition marking a historic milestone between india and the european nations it raises the question Why is India giving so much attention to these four European countries? Additionally, what is EFTA and what benefits will India derive from this agreement? Let's delve into these questions in today's episode. Switzerland, Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein, four countries situated in different corners of Europe, have left their mark in different fields at the global level. If you look at the global arena Switzerland and Liechtenstein are situated between Italy, France and Germany whereas Iceland is situated in the North Pole Norway is a country situated in the Scandinavian peninsula of northern Europe This agreement with these four countries will not only open new avenues for development for India but also for these European nations A 10 billion dollar free trade agreement with these four countries involves several twists and turns. Under this deal, India will remove most import duties on industrial products from these countries in exchange for investment over 15 years. Through the signed agreement with the European Free Trade Association that is EFTA, including lengthy negotiations spanning 16 years, these European countries will invest in various Indian sectors such as pharmaceuticals machinery and manufacturing the agreement will benefit indian agricultural exporters by providing them with tariff concessions in the european bloc additionally it will create new employment opportunities this deal incorporates several new dimensions including intellectual property rights and gender equality political analysts have termed this agreement as a modern trade pact In the current times India has emerged as a significant market and many countries are getting closer to India considering its economic capacity several major global companies are willing to invest in India a common goal to move away from dependence on China regarding major geopolitical changes and economies has helped India in making its first trade agreement with european countries let's understand what is EFTA EFTA is an intergovernmental organization established in 1960 as an alternative trade bloc for European states unable or unwilling to join the European Union. EFTA includes Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway and Switzerland which are not part of the European Union but have access to its single market through various agreements. EFTA is India's ninth largest trading partner accounting for about 2.5% of India's total trade in the fiscal year 2020-21. The main exports from India to EFTA are textiles, chemicals, gems and jewelry, machinery and pharmaceuticals. The main imports from EFTA to India include machinery, chemicals, precious metals and medical equipment. Through this agreement India will gain access to a major developed market in return India will attract more foreign investment from EFTA which will ultimately translate into growth and good jobs overall this deal will assist India in better utilizing its economic capacity and creating additional opportunities for employment looking at the figures India EFTA bilateral trade was 18.65 billion dollars in 2022-23 down from 27.23 billion dollars in 
India's trade deficit was approximately $14.8 billion in the last fiscal year. According to the figures after the EU, the United States, Britain and China, India is the fifth largest trading partner of EFTA. Established in 1960 as a response to the European Union, EFTA has signed approximately 30 trade agreements with around 40 countries and regions outside the European Union. In this series, if we talk about India's relations with these four countries on an individual basis, Switzerland and India have signed agreements on technical and scientific cooperation under an intergovernmental framework initiating the India-Swiss Joint Research Programme. Switzerland is the 12th largest investor in India, accounting for about 1.07% of total foreign direct investment in India between April 2000 and September 2019. Looking at India-Norway relations, the establishment of the India-Norway Task Force on Blue Economy for Sustainable Development was done in the year 2020. Moreover, over 100 Norwegian companies have established themselves in India. Discussing the relations between India and Iceland, diplomatic relations between the two countries were established in 1972 and since 2005, relations have been strengthened with high-level visits and exchanges. India and Iceland share common values such as democracy, rule of law and pluralism. Iceland supported India's candidacy for a permanent seat on the United Nations Security Council. India and Iceland cooperate in trade, renewable energy, science and technology, education, culture and development. To make economic cooperation convenient, several agreements have been signed between the two countries, such as the Double Taxation Avoidance Agreement. Talking about India's relations with Liechtenstein, both nations have friendly relations based on mutual respect and cooperation. Bilateral trade between the two countries was worth $1.59 million in the fiscal year 2016-17. From the perspective of cost and benefit analysis, this is a beneficial deal for India. However, it will be interesting to see whether this agreement will be successful in achieving its goals in the future or not. Now it's the turn of Sunday special coverage in which we take a look at other important happenings around the world. The Reserve Bank of India and Bank Indonesia have signed a Memorandum of Understanding to establish a framework to promote the use of local currencies for cross-border transactions. Under the agreement, Indian rupee and Indonesian rupee will be used for mutual transactions. The primary objective of this MOU is to facilitate bilateral transactions in Indian rupees. This is expected to boost trade between India and Indonesia, deepen financial integration and enhance historical, cultural and economic ties between the two countries. Amidst political upheaval, Shahbaz Sharif was finally elected as the new Prime Minister of Pakistan. With this, Asif Ali Zardari became the 14th President of Pakistan. As soon as he took the oath of office, Zardari, considering the economic condition of the country, announced that he would not take any salary during his tenure. It is noteworthy that Pakistan is deep in debt due to which Pakistan is facing economic pressure. Citing its weak economic condition, Pakistan has recently demanded extended fund facility from IMF. China, Iran and Russia conducted joint naval exercises in the Gulf of Oman. This exercise has been named Maritime Security Belt 2024. Warships and aircraft participated in this military exercise. This is the fifth common military exercise taking place between the three countries. Regarding the exercise, Russia has given a statement that this military exercise focuses on the security of maritime economic activity. Russia's group is led by the missile cruiser Varyag of its Pacific fleet. In this, representatives of the navies of Pakistan, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Oman, India and South Africa will act as observers. So that's all in today's episode. See you in the next episode. But before that, let's note down a question based on today's episode. What is the European Free Trade Agreement? Discuss its usefulness for India. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe. And do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.